better than you to speak no, on such as <laughs> so, like so that's somebody who has been a co-traveler in in some sense uh, i can say this with 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 a lot of assurance and absolute certainty that if there is one person who can speak about the shs from the day one it's you <laughs> so i'm actually feeling very very happy that you could spare some time for this webinar because as i was sharing with all of you and and i can see that there are others who have joined but we will we'll generally take about one or two minutes uh, it's, it's still 11:30 just about 11:30 so we'll begin in about 4 or 5 minutes you know, i i hope that some more people join in any case uh, this uh, uh, interaction this conversation is going to be recorded is is actually being recorded so that uh, it can be displayed and it can be put on the website so that anybody who is who just wants to get a glimpse of uh, you know the, the the university and especially school of human studies and especially a masters in psychology uh, uh, that uh, you know the, this uh, that is available that gives them first uh, sort of uh, glimpse into the world that we we sort of have, have uh, set up so far in that sense so uh, the idea was basically to uh, you know uh, you know those who are who are looking at us as, a, as, a, as an option for for their masters level uh, or or even undergraduate level or research uh, degrees uh, there should be some way to kind of connect to them uh, that is the idea which which led to this uh, webinar uh, uh, series you know we have had four rounds of webinar so far this is the fifth one so uh, uh, without uh, uh, delaying anything anymore i think let's begin with this and uh, 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 let me welcome all of you who have, who are here to to ambedkar university dr b r ambedkar university delhi we and uh, and i'm very happy and glad and very pleased to to share that uh, professor hani oberai wahali is here to to uh, talk about this school where the the psychology programs are housed you know this is the, and we call it school of human studies so uh, 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 without uh, any further delay i would request uh, honey to uh, do the following one introduce the school and introduce, introduce the faculties you know broadly what is their specialization and what what all in the sense the journey that you we all started in 2009 10 i think uh, or even before high psychology predates when sociology in, in ambedkar university delhi in sociology i was the first one to join i remember but i think before i came in 2010 hani and the entire group were already there in dwarka campus so uh, a warm welcome to you hani for for this webinar and uh, uh, i hand it over to you now from on and i'm, I'm really as excited as anybody else to hear you to speak about the school of human studies please uh, introduce your school and largely about your Uh, uh, a master program and also the phd program because uh, for the ba program we have a separate slot called sus sus is the school where you have uh, you know all the uh, ba programs uh, uh, are there you know housed in that school of under the study the reason why i uh, keep talking about uh, requesting all my colleagues coming from different schools to talk about uh, the ba program as well because all of us teach in ba programs irrespective of the fact that so for example i am in school of liberal studies but i teach in the school of uh, school of undergraduate studies also there is an element of what what we call concurrent employment idea is basically to uh, to flatten that hierarchy which which existed for many many years about so those who were teaching in the colleges were teaching ba and then those who were teaching in the university were supposed to be doing higher research etc uh, uh, that that element we were very conscious from the beginning that that we will try and you know uh, Regal out of that that sense of very rigid sense of hierarchy and you know, and so therefore it is possible that uh, you know you will find one day in SUS uh, Professor Hari Oberai is teaching the BA students with as much excitement and passion, and you will find an, a, a fresh uh, an assistant professor uh, you know do, uh, you know talking to the PhD research team. or phd research students so that is very possible in ambedkar university and we have been very proud of that that culture and ecosystem where there is no that kind of hierarchy which which makes it uh, very that kind of distinction between ba is for the lesser mortals and the ma for the higher people uh, you know that kind of uh, understanding we have tried to kind of uh, sort of question from the day we are born so all of us teach in 
all the places without any sense about who is where located in terms of you know hierarchical uh, ranking etc which is of course inevitable anyway thank you very much everyone and now i, I request and, and and welcome uh, honey to uh, please uh, uh, carry it forward from here on thank you honey please so uh, thank you santosh for having me here am i audible yes yeah Others okay. also and uh, welcome to all the aspirants who are here today in the online platform and also to my colleagues mukesh and others from it uh, good morning to everyone i am here with you today on the invitation of the dean student services of ambedkar university my friend uh, professor santosh and i will be talking to you a little bit about the school of human studies in which the psychology programs are housed uh just before i go on santosh do is this interactive or should i just go on you you go on towards the end we will have some questions and some queries i will also come in presentation like, which i can also share with you people yes, if you yes, just yes, give yes, me yeah sure uh, so um Uh, yeah, now I can't see you, so you can please tell me if you know. Yeah, that, um, that's visible now. That's on the screen, honey. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, but I can't see you, people, now, Santosh. So, uh, in no, case you if go ahead. Know, we can see you. So. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we all know, and we have had other webinars so far. Uh, we know that Ambedkar University, Delhi, was established in two thousand and seven. and what is important to understand is that it is an it was an explorative space and the first fully fledged university of social sciences and humanities and i think that was a great distinction um and being in the capital city of delhi i think we had a great advantage of having students from the city we had a location we had a presence and it was important to think about humanities and social sciences in a big way mostly humanities and social sciences have been like a small department in most of the places and we were all very excited for the setting up of this university the school of human studies is one of the flagship programs of the ambedkar university delhi it started way back in 2009 and it started with uh, you know the deliberations of setting up the school of human studies started early in 2008 we would get together to talk about it and you can imagine there was so much of idealism about these programs and we started with the psychology masters program as early on as in 2009 i will go ahead from here now what was the idea of the school of human studies my uh, other colleagues are not here today and i'm sure if they were here they would have many interesting things to add on to what i am uh, going to say honey uh, so, you know the here we uh, know i can see we know the smiling uh, he is yeah, there very I'm much so happy if we know uh, this there we know me like to come in and add on to yeah. so you know uh, our idea was that why should we have we deliberated with the nomenclature for a long time does human include everything we want to talk about it seemed to us not so but then ultimately we settled with the idea of human studies thinking that what we were going to bring about in the field of higher education was the pursuit of engaged and immersed scholarship so this school was a place where we thought that the idea of what it was to be human would be thought about both from the point of view about what humans have been able to um promise and give to the world and also the exclusions that humans have brought about so this was a school and i'm sure in the earlier webinars we have spoken about the idea of what is a school 
what is a program so i'm not going into those things school is a more fluid space it is uh, where you know borders are not so uh, tightly defined disciplines can interact with each other swim coexist with one another and the school of human studies was the idea to interrogate the supposedly universal category of the human which is generally assumed to have natural and essential definitions our idea was to think about that war war is man woman an essential category is rational non rational another essential category is urban rural are they defined categories or are these categories that are mediated through social divisions social hierarchies and we thought it was the latter this placed certain groups into advantage and certain other groups into relative disadvantage or underprivilege therefore one of the important questions that the school of human studies was engaged with right from the beginning was the question of power and also how what is the distribution of power in society even if power is ubiquitous and universal yet how is how does power shape human subjectivity and the ones who are on the receiving end of power or the ones who are underprivileged in social hierarchies how do they experience their life so one of the important idea that we were working was was engagement with social margins engagement with emotional margins engagement with social peripheries and therefore our lens was to understand that when you look at the world from a center point you get to see certain things and when you look at the world you rotate your the lens of your camera and you look at the world from the extreme right or the extreme left and the periphery mm-hmm. comes into view and along with the periphery experiences which have been silenced they come into view now when you listen to subjugated parts of society of human emotions you don't have a proper language there but you do have experience there and therefore we were interested in moving the pedagogical lens to experiential ways of exploration there are two points i'd like to make here which were very critical to the school of human studies we were not just going with the idea of you know uh, pity or sympathy for the margins we were going with the idea that there is knowledge at the margins which the center has never been able to utilize in creating essential categories or in the creation of natural categories so for instance uh, we often and most of you are young aspirants and you will be coming into these programs so our concern was that there is knowledge of rationality but there is also something that a person who is in a state of breakdown is trying to say yeah if we do away with the category of man and woman for uh, for a few minutes then we have the social construction of what it means to be man what it means to be woman or what it means for a man to be a woman and for maybe a woman to embody the masculine principle within oneself yeah so two things we were working with you do away with the majoritarian point of view and you have knowledge from the margins which has been neglected for a long time now this knowledge is also an epistemology in itself this knowledge is also something from where a new way of thinking can develop that is one thing that we wanted to think that to think about margins as sites of critical understanding which is not to say that to just have sympathy for madness but what does madness tell us about normalcy what does madness tell us about a social system 
that has many things which lead to somebody becoming the scapegoat and therefore being called as mad as a mad person and that was what went into the first creation of our psychology program re looking at what we get to understand when we look at the world from the standpoint of the rational what do we get to understand when we look at the standpoint of irrationality also as an epistemology now this will make us shake many taken for granted assumptions of society therefore it was important to think about critical knowledge as a very important base in the school of human studies yeah? critical knowledge is not about criticizing something when we say that shs and aud in general is premised upon higher education as having a critical angle it means that we don't look at the world through innocent lenses it means that we can learn as students in the university to ask difficult questions to ask uncomfortable questions not just for the sake of asking un a uh, comfortable questions because we want to create the world into a topsy turvy position we ask difficult questions as students of social sciences and humanities because we want to make a difference to the world in which we exist and the difference that we want to make into the world is we want the world to become more just we want the world to become more inclusive we want the world to become more compassionate we want our world to be uh, there for people whom we have so far also marginalized that is the standpoint of the school of human studies and knowledge from the margins yeah so that we can ultimately what we will learn in our classrooms should also have some relationship with the lives that we live yeah uh santosh i hope i'm audible yes very much please go on yes so one of our other concerns at the shs and i would say at ambedkar university all through for the last 12 13 years of the existence of the university has been to bring lived life and classroom discourses closer to one another it shouldn't be that when the student goes out of the classroom then the student thinks oh the knowledge that i got in the university it's very good in terms of theories but how do i apply it to the realities of my family how do i apply it to the struggles of my community in the culture so the idea of higher education at aut and at shs has been to make a bridge between what we live back in our families what we live sometimes we will also have to ask questions about that and what we learn in the classroom context the other thing that the shs takes as an important thing is that you see there are two read routes to knowledge and higher education in university context not only in aut but all over the world has prioritized intellect and has prioritized a lot of you know conceptual ideas in all of this experience has often been marginalized now at the school of human studies because we also started with psychology program but i would say not just because of psychology program when we are interrogating uh, you know the idea of the human experience is an important starting point and what we wanted to talk about was that how do we go into understanding concepts and theories if we also delve into experience so theory that is born from experience rather than theories only being taken and superimposed on experience so this is another unique a uh, part that we do at the shs is that why we call our school as engaged and immersive is because first our first subject to be understood is often the self in psychology we do it in gender studies we do it in development practice we do the same also in disability studies yeah so before i understand others it is of some importance for me to also understand my own life understand the way that i have internalized values 
understand the things that I am blind to and also understand the things that I gradually become more open to. So subjectivity is a key concept in the School of Human Studies. So, so to enter the world of education from not an abstract and a distant position, but from a first person viewpoint. So this is a different kind of education. You know, a lot of times we believe that we will learn uh, concepts, but a lot of students, when they come back 10 years later on, 15 years later on, they remember teachers more for how they were made to feel in the classroom context. Yeah? So power is not just theoretical. Power is an everyday lived experience between a teacher and a student. So this is immersive education, how we make each other feel. Uh, I'm here remembering um, an um, Afro-American uh, poet, uh, Maya Angelou, who said that people will often forget what you said. They will never forget how you made them feel. Yeah? So subjectivity is a first person entry into education. In SHS, we value the student's subjective point of view. I will come to this more when I talk in just a few minutes about the psychology programs. Yeah? Now, the relationship between what we understand in the classroom, how we will apply this in the society is an important take of education at the School of uh, Human Studies. Because ultimately, our task is to prepare certain kinds of researchers, educators, and professionals who will go and intervene towards the making of a more just society. Who can question hierarchies, not just as I said earlier on, for the sake of questioning, but for the betterment of society in terms of more equality. And like what Gandhi said, we should remember that part that, you know, you don't have to, um, Gandhi always said that we don't have to send uh, the British away because we have to fight them. But when India will be free, Britain will also be free. So in social hierarchies, we are often bound by the one, the, the perpetrator is also in some sense dehumanized in the act of dehumanizing. So that is why we need to work with social hierarchies. To free some also means to free the one who is binding them. And that is one way in which we think about bringing knowledge, advocacy, and activism together through our understanding in the School of Human Studies. Uh, and similarly, research should lead to socially engaged scholarship. Now, research, that means the kind of questions that we are asking, it also means the way we go about doing research. One of the hallmarks of the School of Human Studies is we don't believe in researching on topics or we believe in researching for and with people. So it is a more horizontal idea of research where mutuality is respected, where the person who we, who becomes our participant in the research is actually as much, if not more, the expert than the one who's going to seek that knowledge. So seeker and the teller are in a relationship through a storied way of understanding human lives in the school of human studies. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I... Uh, so the vision of the school, very briefly speaking, equality and social justice in education with quality and excellence. This is the vision of the Ambedkar University as well. Uh, we believe that it is important for, for there to be economic growth, but economic growth should parallel social transformation, economic growth, which actually creates more disjunction in society is dangerous. Therefore, all sections of society need to be transformed in the pursuit of economic growth. And then 
we also believe like ambedkar university's larger vision that higher education is not just about meeting market demands higher education is a pursuit of creating spaces where there is social need that is where our students should be going into and of course access and success in higher education should go hand in hand i would also like to say here that when we have so much of space these days for reservation our curriculum also needs to change to speak to the realities of all students in the classroom that is what we try to do in the school of human studies to some degree i think we are successful to large degrees we have still a lot of learning to do yeah i have already spoken about how the school of human studies is mindful of the deep interconnections between knowledge and power and we try to do the constructive work along with experiential work to understand domains of experience and domains of social hierarchies okay so we are mindful in the shs how various uh, subject locations both of faculty and students immerse with one another i think one of our usp if in humility i can say is that it has been our endeavor across these years to try to listen to the voice of every student in the classroom again i think our students will be able to say whether we have been successful in this or not but our slogan has been not to find the best student but to find the best in every student because we do believe every student brings something very distinctive something very unique from their experiences and their positions and it is our it is the teacher's responsibility to hold the class in such a way that the voice of each student is respected held and allowed to flower interdisciplinarity is an important thing of the school of human studies we don't believe that disciplines are tightly bound with one another actually we believe that every discipline if we go into the depth of it has all other disciplines already present so here if you come to study gender studies or you come to study psychology or disability studies you will be you know you will be like a fish which is swimming in an ocean and the ocean has many life for you know many life forms to offer at the same point of time so interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity both are practiced in the teaching in school another important thing is this praxis between theory and practice yeah very important theory and practice are both like the life line of each other and the lines between them cannot be an arrow that goes one side the arrow is a dual side theory is created out of practice and practice again gives birth to theory the same is true in the shs as far as knowledge and action are concerned knowledge and action are in constant relationship with each other so the what we learn in the classroom is practiced in real life contexts and what we have practiced again has a bearing upon how we will imagine the theory in the program uh now the faculty in the school of human studies uh, let me here say this that there are many pro programs in the school of human studies in the afternoon you will get to hear from my colleagues from the school uh, from the gender studies program but over these last 12 or 13 years shs has uh, you know um a broad based both in terms of there has been a widening of the school and has been a deepening of the school as well so there are psychology programs there are programs in training in psychotherapy there are programs in development practice in the past there is a phd program in disability studies and of course from ma onwards till the phd 
MA, MPhil, and PhD have been there in the gender studies program. What is very interesting about the faculty of SHS and not just about the psychology, but also about the psychology is that most people in the faculty have degrees, um, you know, in the backdrop, which are more than one discipline. So in uh, my other colleague who's present in the webinar at present is uh, Mr. Vinod. Vinod has a base both in psychology as well as in education. We have others who have a base in, say, philosophy and psychology, or somebody else in the program who has a base in gender studies and psychology. So, you know, the, the very fact that we, my own training was in psychology, clinical psychology, psychoanalysis, and psychohistory. So there are people who have the advantage of already having traversed through multiple domains and the richness that they bring, the questions and the challenges that they bring with working with more than one way of thinking that comes in. So we have colleagues in gender studies, they will talk for themselves, who are coming from literature to gender studies, political science to gender studies. So SHS is very rich in terms of the faculty and the experience that the faculty brings up and uh, therefore what enables them is transformative education, engaged and also transgressive, as I said, asking of difficult questions. Now, given the paucity of time, I will quickly go over uh, some of the slides and, uh, you know, um, uh, say this, that over these last 12, 13 years, SHS has held many international uh, scholars uh, visiting faculty. There have been vibrant series of lectures. We have had many international conferences, especially our conferences in psychoanalysis have uh, spoken about to all Eastern cultures as well. You know, we've had Indo-Japanese conference, we have had Indo-Iranian conference, we have had, you know, so not just that we have looked at the West as the site of knowledge, but we have also looked as Asia also as a very, very crucial site of knowledge and tried to bridge bridges between them. Uh, so um, it would be impossible for me to really go into the amount of lectures, seminars that the SHS has done, but it has been a very vibrant school as far as collaborations, both from West and non-Western cultures, also within India as well. Um, let me now go to uh, a little bit, uh, Santosh, I think I can go to the psychology program now. Yes, and yes, maybe yes, come yes. back uh, to the school if there is a need. This is a slide where you can see you know, how the school functions. There is a psychosocial uh, studies program, psychosocial, and this has a very important take in clinical one-to-one -one work and clinical group transformative work also. Our concern remains with social suffering and also this, uh, you know, the suffering of individuals. Gender studies, which critiques the givens of gender, it has a very strong uh, connection with the women's movement, reconstructive praxis, collective action, and social justice. So while the psychology program goes towards social and individual healing, the gender studies programs go towards the questions of social justice. Disability uh, studies, you can say, it takes us towards the care ethics to questions of well-being. And then we have the entire field of development practice, which really looks at the question of the rural urban divide, questions of social economic disparity, etc. Now coming can now, you, if you, sorry, can now, can you double click your, uh, uh, your, your the text is still blurred. If you can double click it, it will be better visibility. It, it will have, it, at the moment okay. it looks blurred. Uh, if you can, uh, below, is it better now? Uh, I mean, when I double clicked uh, Santosh on my laptop, that blurry was okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, you go on. I think you are. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's, I think we will be able to make make the text. You know, it's, it's, sure. it's fine. Uh, you want me to try to do my screen full? Is it? Sorry. 
you want me to make a full screen or something no no, no it's okay you i think it's better you you speak that is making lot more yeah, sense yeah, yeah. the text yeah. please go ahead okay. i think it's much more okay so i uh, not take too much of time but i will just go to the psychology programs a little bit as a uh, professor santosh mentioned we have a ba honors in psychology which is done by the shs along with the school of undergraduate studies this program started in 2010 my colleague ms deepthi will be talking about this in a special seminar of the um, sus i think which is scheduled for the 6th of uh, july so i will leave that to deepthi to take it on we have the masters program in psychology and we call ourselves as psychosocial clinical studies This was our first program in the School of Human Studies, started in two thousand and nine. By now, we have had seven batches that have passed out and graduated, with more than about six hundred students having gone from the SHS into the uh, Indian uh, scenario. They have done doing extremely well. You know, it is a pleasure. Almost every convocation when we meet our students, uh, and about thirty to thirty-five. or maybe more than that would be very fruitfully employed in different places and uh, doing exceptionally good work by exceptionally good work what i imply not really that only that they are earning well which some of them are doing quite well but i think wherever they are placed they are bringing about a change they are bringing about a change in the way psychology is being taught in the way psychology is being practiced in the way that they if they are working with ngos and that has been our hope actually speaking you know that when our students go out even if they are and i will talk about that in a minute even if they are doing something which is not the mainstream how well they are being able to find a place carve a niche for themselves so i'm very heartened and if my other colleagues would have been here too which is not to say that because this is a university uh, you know a webinar i should say that all is well i'm not trying to say that there are struggles there are general genuine struggles that young people face but there is also something that they believe they have taken from their education and that they find a place to take to in the world beyond the university that has really been our hope we have also in the shs in the psychology programs we had an mphil program in psychotherapy very unique one and a distinctive one in the entire south asian scenario from 2011 to 2023 this program has run it was called mphil in um in phil in clinical thinking and psychotherapy initially and then later on in phil psychoanalytic psychotherapy the last batch is now passing out in 2023 and we are currently in the process of reinvisioning how we will be rethinking this program and what we will be doing about the experience we have gathered from it because now the ugc has closed down the in phil program but this was another very rich program then we have the phd program uh, from 2012 onwards in psychology and um, and you know we have had four cohorts of phd in psychology so far i would like to say here one thing before going further shs has contributed to a very high number of research degrees awarded at ambedkar university delhi especially at the mp level whether this is mphil in psychoanalytic psychotherapy mphil in development practice or mphil in women and gender studies research has been a very strong point at the shs okay uh, so uh, now let me come to the uh, uh, ma program in psychosocial clinical studies uh, just as an introduction if i may say here that a psychology is a discipline which is very much in demand today and increasingly young people like to come to study psychology uh that however was not the only reason why we thought of a psychology program at um, the school of human studies 
we thought of a psychology program, master's level program at the School of Human Studies, mm -hmm. because we were also experimenting with different ways of doing psychology. When I say this, what I mean to say is that most of the time, uh, you go anywhere in India, with the exception of few universities, mm -hmm. psychology has this crisis that it really tries to fit itself in some places into a science, in other places into an arts field. And the medical baggage of psychology has indeed been very heavy. However, while it is useful to have a psychiatric or a medical baggage of psychology, it also takes away something from the field as it were. So experimental psychology, uh, clinical psychology, these are well-established fields of psychology in most universities. Now, what we were trying to do at the School of Human Studies was to create a psychosocial clinical program. And that is why with the last slide, I was saying what is heartening is that with the difference, our students have been doing so well. In fact, they have become by and large leaders in the places where they have gone lived their struggles, but nevertheless brought in a difference into these domains. So our idea was that how should psychology be taught, a psychology that is contextual in nature, a psychology that connects to the social, a psychology that is embedded in experience, and a psychology that has a link with history. Yeah. So we were interested in a contextual psychology. We were interested in psychology that could connect to social richness and social suffering. Psychology which had a historical lens when we enter into the field and a psychology that also spoke to people of differences. And yet a psychology which was deep in terms of human understanding, human depth, and human experience. Yeah? So this is the interlocution of psychology in the School of Human Studies with its connectedness intact with the philosophical, the anthropological, the political, and the psychological perspectives and how they all speak to one another. Yeah, I have already spoken about the human as a historical idea, so I will not go into that again because of, you know, I don't have time for repetitions here. So uh, let me go further into this program. If we think about it, there is something which is innovative about our program, and that is that, uh, you know, this program, sorry, this program has um, is based on um, because this was a program in which we wanted to establish a different domain and a different way of doing psychology. As you can see, the light brown one, there are a whole lot of core courses. There are also foundational courses, and I will just say what are foundational courses, and then there are few elective courses. Yeah. Uh, the foundational courses are courses which cut across the School of Human Studies. That is where the idea of the school stays intact. Yeah. So whether there is a student in gender studies or there is a student in master's in psychology, the anthropological or the sociological and the political is something that they will all go through. So, for instance, we have four foundational courses in the School of Human Studies, like there is a course called Experiencing the Self. That is that gender studies students will also do it and psychology students will also do it. It is a course which will take them to understanding human subjectivity from the first person, yeah, where our own life history, our own psychobiography becomes a point through which we enter the domain of education. Who am I? How am I related to the world? What is? What are the unconscious assumptions in my life? What are my complexes? 
what are the challenges that i brought up from my family how do these challenges become the lens through which i generally look at the world at large what does this vision hinder for me what does this vision foreground for me so that's like a course that all students in the shs take up yeah it is biographical it is a difficult course because you know when you are studying things from a distance you can take um recourse to theory hide behind it when you are doing an experiential course you have to undo a lot of taken for granted notions in your own life so it's a course that travels through experience then there is another course like you know politics resistance and transformation now what is the idea of transformation through the political can we reimagine the political what what are the ideas of resistance that we have gandhi had one idea of what resistance was ambedkar had another idea of what social resistance was martin luther king had another dream of resistance uh, hana andrit during the holocaust times was speaking about another way of philosophy and ethics so this course takes us to visions of politics and resistance which again why should a psychologist be studying this a psychologist should be studying this this course psychology is not delinked in fact psychology is founded on these fundamental questions of the social and the ethical so that is another course of the foundations that students undertake yeah they they, they go about it then there is a course on philosophy yeah which is a course on ideas and ethics ethics is very very pronounced you know so you cannot become a psychologist if as a psychologist i say my ethic is to listen to everyone that is my psychological ethic but that doesn't mean that as a psychologist i have no idea of what is right and wrong i have no idea of what is discrimination and marginalization in society i have no idea of what is majoritarian or minor minoritarian currents i do have all of those ideas but my ethic as a psychologist is also to listen with empathy to both the perpetrator as well as to the victim however i need to have an idea of the whole journey of how philosophy has developed what is ethical what is the idea there so what i'm trying to say here is the foundational courses try to bring in ways of human is another foundational course in the um, you know so these foundational courses will lay the ground whichever then you go into psychology you go into development practice you go into gender studies but the student trained at shs will go into four foundational courses then because we were setting up a different way of doing psychology we have a set of core courses as you can then see in the next slide yeah the core courses are a major part in that so foundational courses take up 16 credits core courses in the psychology program take up 40 credits elective courses are lower in terms yeah because the core we are setting up the field of psychology so you could have a core course like reading freud is a core course or you can have a core course like childhood society childhood and society is another core course or listening uh, communicating and relating is another core course or you know uh, you could have a core course like psychic work so there is you can look at the program document you will have all the core courses in it then you have elective courses that students can choose okay i can take up this course or another course let me go back to again a few other distinctive features of it like field work the program is held in place between the knowledge that is understood in the classroom context and the knowledge that is understood while going into the field so in the field work um, there is a uh, during in between the second semester and the third semester the student works in the field let me also say this we have a field within 
uh, the AUD as well. We have a low cost or a free clinic of psychotherapy housed in the center of psychotherapy and clinical research, which is called as the SRS clinic. Sometimes our students also locate the SRS clinic as the first learning place where they learn to listen to other human beings. They learn to connect to the distress of other human beings and also to respond to emotional social suffering there. Similarly, they could be going for field work to NGOs, to hospitals, to social setups outside of EUD, there to community sites. And we have linkages with all of these sites where our students and this is not to say that they become professionals. This is to say that they have the first taste of intersubjective engagement in the field work with the uh, with in any of these sites. So there are a number of sites. Some of them can be like you know clinical psychology sites. Some of them can be NGOs. Some of them can be community work sites where the students work or our own SRS clinic where they learn to do a few sessions listen in groups, listening circles, and individual sites as well. The other important thing here I would like to say about the psychology program over the years has been, and we were very strong on this at one point of time. Now, you know, we are waiting for more faculty to join in so that we can recover some of our parts is our mentorship program. Yeah. By mentorship program, I mean that student and faculty have a very close interface with each other. As you can imagine, because a lot of our education is also experiential, of course, students will need us in a very different way. Listening to the issues of each student, responding to both their ethical, spiritual, political, social concerns, familial concerns, and not just on a one-to-one -one basis, but also holding the mentorship through, you know, a student comes in crisis. What can I help my student by way of even readings that will strengthen something for the student's uh, entry into the professional domain, also the personal domain. So mentorship has been another very important part of the psychology training. And as I'm saying, we are fewer in numbers in terms of faculty presently, but I'm sure in soon time to come, we will again become strong enough with our mentorship program. Also, our ideas about assessment are quite innovative, like the role of AUD. We also work with diverse forms of assessment and you know, students don't generally feel that they get trapped only in the written assessment. And also, I would think we don't give our students too much of scope of plagiarism because the assessment often draws upon the students' own ideas. You know, we want our students to become thinkers in the right as they are moving on with their um, education. So they can really become like people where there is a value in the assessment what they think, how they use the ideas that they are learning in the classroom context to create their own concepts. Through these concepts, they can link to theories, they can link to thinkers, but the student's voice is an important voice, whether they do presentations, whether they do group work, whether they do collages, whether they do diary writing, whether do they do profiles. So there is a whole variety of assessment forms that we practice within the psychology program. I think better than me or my colleagues speaking, it would be great if university and all of you who are aspirants can also talk to pass out students. They would tell us really the test whether we have succeeded in what I'm talking about or not. And finally, of course, we have a research dissertation. This research dissertation starts, the idea of the research dissertation is put before the student at the end of the second semester. And in the third and the fourth semester, the research dissertation begins to take a shape. Uh, this is also distinctive because many programs in psychology do not have research dissertation. Our students, whether this, you know, to whatever extent they can do it, but this is a first-hand experience of working with others in the field, 
they can also do a theoretical treatise if they don't want to do empirical work. Most of the students end up doing empirical work, but uh, some students also like to do a theoretical work. Yeah. Now, very briefly, without taking too much of time, if I may say some of our program outcomes after doing our course or in the process of doing the MA in psychosocial clinical studies, students acquire the ability to appreciate and recognize the complexity of the idea of the human. They can think through different models of psychology, particularly psychoanalysis as an important standpoint and understanding based on the idea of the unconscious. So we don't just work with the rational or the irrational, we also work with the non-rational. We don't look at the unconscious only as the site of problem. We also look at the unconscious as the space of wisdom in life. Yeah. So they work with um, both in psychology and critical psychoanalysis. They learn to work with human categories, psychoanalytic diagnostic categories, they can work with other human beings, begin to work with, you know, because the training to become a clinician is a long time training, but the training to work with human subjectivity is a broader one. You may be working in clinical domains or, as I said before, you may be taking your knowledge to NGOs, academia, etc. So uh, they identify the dynamic psychosocial processes that foster and sustain marginalization and social exclusion. They uh, work, uh, you know, uh, we don't look at somebody as a, having a state of breakdown as that being the problem of the person per se. Maybe we go a little bit on the extreme, but like the psycho uh, phenomenological psychoanalyst R.D. Lang said, sometimes schizophrenia is a sane response of living in an insane world. So our students also learn to appreciate that an individual may be the carrier of symptoms, but the problems are also located in social locations. It is not just an individual's problem if somebody is suffering. There can be problems of, of families, of societies and cultures, and we have to think at this level as well, and then learn to recognize symptomatology across these domains. They carry an interdisciplinary orientation. They can design research problems uh, by using phenomenology quite adequately. So listening to human narratives and human stories is their strength as the students graduate in research as well. Uh, then they can, you know, understand psychological patterning of experience and take it to enhance subjective sense of agency. Um, then I would think uh, there is a dual lens of looking inward and looking outward as well. And inward and outward are not like fixed categories and students work with both from internal worlds to larger realities and working to make a difference between them. Um, I would also like to say that one of the training ground, as I said a while back, uh, has been the SRS clinic and the center of psychotherapy. Now, this is another very unique ex uh, experimentation of the SHS psychology program where, where a very different imagination of doing clinical work has been nurtured by us. And these clinical conversations that they have with other human beings become some of the important grounds of becoming psychologists tomorrow. Um, so this is some of the takes that the students take from here. Um, now, some of the, before going to the PhD program, I think I've already taken a lot of time. Let me say this, that there is a huge long list of expertise in of the faculty, uh, but you know, uh, some of us have been working to understand the world of refugees, displaced populations, and you can imagine how important this question has been, whether it is a question of internal um, migration or um, 
many displaced people or refugees in the world today. We have been working on the mother-daughter relationship, particularly in the Indian context, indigenous forms of healing and therapy. So what we learn from Western education, how it relates to our culture and our psyche. Uh, there has been work on psychosis and dissociation, psychology and caste in Indian society, understanding suicidality, working with low fee and redoing the commercialization in mental health or health uh, context in Indian setups has been an important thing. Compassionate work, which is also ethical. Education and psychology interface has been a very strong part of it. Rethinking pedagogy through psychological lens, the value of mourning, subversive social work, you know, so the list is actually exhaustive. I wish my other colleagues were also here with me to talk on their behalf. I'm sure I will be missing out so much on them, but I'm sure when you will come to the university, you will have to, um, you will have an opportunity to listen to each uh, faculty member for what they bring in. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep everybody in mind. I'm sure I can't do that. Now, our actual intake in 2021-23 was 52 students, and I think they have all passed out with the important thing. Santosh, do you think I should go on to the PhD program because I'm I, already over there? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it is a one-hour webinar, but uh, uh, we'll have to uh, add some more time to it because I think there are some questions uh, which need to be uh, sort of responded with. There is a colleague, Sachit, who is uh, with part of Assistant Registrar Student Services, who is responding to the technical questions. And, uh, and uh, you know, honey, you did more than what I, what you and I expected in the morning. So should I just do two minutes no. and go into the no, no, I, think and you have, I think you have given enough flavor of what we do here, you know. And uh, okay. that's exactly what, what we wanted because uh, so far what, what was the what we do is that once you join Ambedkar University, then you get to know what we do. I think this time okay. I wanted to tell the world what we do beforehand, and it, it's a, it's not a it's something that uh, is very required in in time like this that uh, we need to uh, t reach out to the students and the, and the parents and whoever is interested in us and our courses and programs. It is with with this interest that intention that I thought it would be a good idea to get a glimpse of or some some broad idea about exactly what is the mood and what is the flavor of the, the, the program and what is this school of human studies. I think that that part has been very well taken. I think there are, of course, most of these information, the courses that are available online as well, you know, and then uh, not no, but, uh, and then most of our us are very, very open for any kind of email uh, that comes from his, his students or, or 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 whoever is interested. So in that sense, I think we have always been very very, you know, open for any kind of communication interaction. And and so uh, would like to thank you, Honey, for your very comprehensive uh, the way in which you introduced uh, your your program, your school, and everything. And uh, I would like Binod to just join with a little bit of uh, other things which which we do, and you know how you think there's something that you would like sure. to say. And sure. to add to what Honey has just now yeah. said. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Honey Ma'am and uh, Santosh. Uh, on the summer, uh, trying to work this through to tell to the world what we are. I think uh, uh, as a faculty, I would just like to just start on a personal note that uh, I studied my honors in um, physics, chemistry and maths and then moved on to master's in education and taught in Delhi University in the education department, followed by the psychology department in the undergraduate program of Delhi before coming to AUD. So straight away, you see that my own journey of 18 years of teaching have been in education and psychology. And one of the best things about the university uh, when we started with was this uh, idea of at least academic autonomy and freedom in designing courses. And I have taught courses across BA. I teach courses like Identity Through Popular Narratives, Understanding Childhood. Across MA, I have taught courses like Experiencing the Self at some point, Childhood Identity in Society, um, Life at the Margins, and even MPhil Development Practice Program. 
and I was also, uh, I used to teach about 10 credits also in the MA education program, like experiencing education, self-development workshop, and also surviving educational failure. So these were, this was my journey to you as this is an open space for admissions. So you're just listening to just my narrative. So very briefly, uh, the word human, uh, as you see, uh, when we teachers coming from different journeys really try to interrogate the question, we see the human itself is a potential site for philosophy, anthropology, politics, and uh, psychology coming together. So, yeah, so it's not just about critiquing from each perspective or a theoretical engagement, but also life experiences and critical engagement all go hand in hand, I think. So that is something that I really wanted to share. The other thing is also is to focus on the human and her experience, right? And therefore, uh, what is this difficult journey that we all in School of Human Studies are struggling to be humane you know, uh, is, is the vision that we are striving towards. So one of the visions that we're really striving towards is how to be humane in a university context. And how does this being humane, um, not just about uh, not just about transcending hierarchies and, you know, uh, equity and justice, but also how do we bring this humanness in clinical practice in working with poor or, or transformation, transformative social action. So, so, you know, how does this word human act both also as a refuge, as a repository for challenges, difficulties, struggles, but also for hope and joy. So, so, uh, so in short, you see that, you know, uh, that human is, is embodied, mm. it's immersed in the social, uh, it's also sort of extended towards the real and imagined, and it's also decentered in theory. So uh, we are not just fond of the line history makes humans, but we are trying to see if humans can make history in that sense, right? So therefore our focus, you have listened to Professor Honey O'Broy and her extensive work, life commitment and passion towards setting up the clinic and also several other of my colleagues who come uh, from various disciplinary positions, right? Uh, they really focus on psychic process or embedded emotional predictions or politico-historical predicaments, cultural and economic choices and compulsions that people go through and ceaseless struggles that characterize the life of human, right? And, and, and then we see if human history can, you know, is not just understood as a space to resist oppression and at the same time to uh, also understand the dynamics of oppression, but also to dehumanize, to also understand what dehumanizes oneself and others. So in that sense, you know, this whole space is also an open space to learning, to listen to loss, trauma, suffering of the individual and the social in a playful, but also very experiential and empathic and caring manner, but also able to really struggle to work towards uh, uh, the larger goals of um, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar in his struggle for uh, dignity and, and vision across the extremely hierarchical space uh, that, that, that that our country often sees it. So, so yeah, so, and and if you, and the Dean Student Services, even Santosh also offers courses on caste and things. So although we are studying human studies, we are also looking at other schools to really work this through. And that is, this is just, an, this just my, just thoughts, because I was just, uh, I just shared to say yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, we know that I just want to come in here. Uh, uh, and to say a few things about uh, our university. And uh, the first thing that I want to say is that we are Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University, Delhi, and there is a lot of confusion about it happens that there is a college by the name of Ambedkar in Delhi University. And, you know, so many people think that it must be said in the, in the, at the outset only that we are a unitary university and we have multiple campuses. But we do not affiliate colleges. We do not have the notion of college as such, with all due respect for the idea of college. But the fact is that it's a very flat, non-hierarchical world, multiple campuses, but we are a unitary uh, campus in the sense that uh, we should be known by, and we are known 
in media uses the word AUD, which is fine, but there, there is one, everybody should know that we are Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, University Delhi. That is that is the way it should be because there is no question of any confusion because I think that a lot of people confuse it with some college in Delhi University. As you can see some question where they say it is about, listen, there's another thing that, second thing that I would like to say that we are part of the uh, government of NCT of Delhi. This university is a, is a public university fully funded by the Delhi government. This is very important for us to, to everybody to kind of, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, share this with. And therefore, this as 85% uh, seats are reserved for Delhi students and 15% seats are reserved for non-NCT, non-Delhi students. But I, this is where I have to clarify another thing. Who is a Delhi wala and who is not a Delhi wala is something which is technical. What is that technical part? The technical part is that th those, so if, for example, if you are looking for a, for a seat in MA psychology, then you can apply within the Delhi uh, reservation of 85%. You have done your last degree from any of the institutions of Delhi, 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 Delhi state, right? It's very, it should be very clear for everyone that, for example, you are looking for a seat in the BA, then your plus two must be from Delhi. This is very clear. It should be made so that before you. So some there is a question about Delhi University. We we are two different entities altogether, not just technically, but also in spirit we are very different. Ambedkar University and that as I as I've been saying all along in these webinars that uh, reason why we want to kind of uh, put ourselves as the front of this university is because we believe in ourselves as faculty colleagues. This is our strength. If you are sending your words to to a university and you are looking for for infrastructure, Ambedkar University is, yeah, we are there, but I think the best part is that our our colleagues, our the kind of ecosystem that we have created here and the, and, and the faculty, this is the strength of, the, of this university, new university, young university, almost a toddler in front of a university which is celebrating the centenary year, right, Delhi University. So they are, Delhi University is a central university, we are a state university. And therefore, 85% seats are reserved for Delhi students and 15% seats are reserved for, for the non-Delhi students, non-NCT. So these are the things which are very important. The third thing that I want to say, the, uh, you know, Dean Student Services, that access word is very important. Inclusion, these, these are very important key cons ideas for us. And we are, they are very dear to us. So uh, there is a very liberal uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, assistance to the students in terms of learning enhancement in terms of uh, student welfare fund, the, in terms of uh, scholarships, merit scholarships, and all of this. And also, uh, come, students coming from the marginal uh, background, like, you know, uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe students, they have 100% fee waiver from the, from the beginning itself. That is very, very, I think these are the things which must be said, that it's nothing should stop you from dreaming, and nothing should stop you from, from entering into a university and higher education. Access is therefore very important. We are there, each one of us, whether in somebody in the School of Human Studies or somebody in the School of Liberal Studies or whichever, there are 14 schools in this environment. And everywhere you'll find the similar flavor, the same temperament and then attitude to kind of in, incorporate people, to get them there. As, as Honey was constantly referring to the sensitivity to the margin is the, the, the soul of this university. And that's very, very important in every sense of the term. So they, those students who are looking for first generation students and people from, you know, from margin, this is the university for you. Please come and we are there for you in every sense of the term. There are, as I said, that there are scholarships, there are learning announcement, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, funds and there are scholarships, there are travel grants, I don't think, you know, I must say this, that this is the only university perhaps where not just the masters and the PhD students who are encouraged to go abroad and make presentation or, you know, read their papers and uh, attend a seminar or conference, both nationally, internationally, but also BA students have been, have, have been part of this. We don't make this distinction. And therefore, this is a extremely, what, what should one say, extremely, uh, you know, congenial environment it pro provides for, for social science and humanities uh, students. And uh, uh, the, uh, and what else? I think uh, this more or less summarizes uh, uh, everything in the sense. Other, uh, I think the questions which are there, there are some people, some students there. If you want to ask any question to either uh, Honey or Binod, please feel free. 
some technical queries have been answered and uh, registrations have started for the BA uh, for the UG programs but this is the first stage of registration the real second part will begin when the the, the CUET comes out with the results that that's very important that you should be constantly online and uh, keep looking up the website our brochure is already there so you can also see the uh, uh, you know details about uh, anti ragging you know the the, the how, what a I mean, the kind of other things which are required for for admission etc this brochure has especially the last 10 15 pages are very very important for you please look up those pages and uh, i would once again on behalf of the faculty of school of human studies and thank, I would like to first thank Binod and, and Hani for sparing some time during the summer vacation at my, at my insistence. And uh, it's, it's was lovely listening to both of you. It looked like, you know, back to another, another world, you know. So it, it never we never realized when the one hour when one hour just just disappeared, you know. So, so thank you very much, everyone. And uh, uh, if any, there are any questions from anybody, please do feel free to ask. I can see there are there are students here, and if they have, uh, if your questions have been answered, or if you want to ans ask uh, straight away any question that you have for Hani or Vinod, uh, please do feel free to ask. I think most uh, most uh, questions have been answered, and I think the rest of the uh, questions and queries will be. Of course, there is a team which is working on it. There is a helpline, desk, etc. has been put up. So uh, I think uh, 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 the basic idea was to introduce our program and courses, et cetera, and our school, which has been done comprehensively. So I want to thank everyone on, on behalf of the, dean, uh, the Student Services Division and from, from everyone here, uh, and I will end here, actually. Thank you very much. Thank you and very thank much, you Santosh, for having us here and giving us this opportunity. So, thank you so much. And and the, yes. Thanks to everyone who came to listen yeah that yes. is our lifetime yeah that people are <laughs> yes yes thank you very much and and for those of you who are interested in the sus ba psychology program the, there is a separate uh, presentation will be done by my colleague dipti uh, sajdeva who will be making a presentation on on 6th of july so you can uh, you can see our schedule and most of these webinars are being recorded and put it there on the website so you can you can see the last four web uh, for for webinars and the, this one also by evening will be will be uploaded there so i think you will wherever you whenever you join you will get a sense about our what we do our courses our university etc right so thank you very much uh, once again and and of, of course hopefully we'll get to meet uh, to in our campus when we open thank you very much thanks Thank you. Thank you, everyone.